All right, welcome back. As promised, we have local attorney Chuck Bork with St. Martin and Bork. And Chuck, of course, is helicopter pilot for a long number of years, 25 years. He's an expert in that field. He's done a lot of litigation in that field for full transparency. He is not currently in litigation on this helicopter crash. So I want to welcome Chuck on board. And, and Chuck, you heard the parish president from Lafouche Parish, Archie Chesson. Just give me your, your feelings. You've sort of dug into this story. What are you thinking at this point? So, Martin, we've done a number of similar cases over the years. So you've got a helicopter that's flying from an offshore location, I think in this case Venice, and it's en route to Patterson. Um, weather was pretty, so I don't think weather is going to be an issue that caused us to crash. One of the witness reports I heard said that there was a loud bang. He heard the helicopter flying over here, a loud bang, and then the helicopter started descending rapidly. That loud bang could be a number of things. One of the things could be an engine failure. Um, technical term, that's a compressor stall, which may indicate that the engine failed. And at that point, the helicopter is going to start descending. Now, helicopters do have the ability, even with an engine failure, to land. You do a procedure called an auto rotation. Um, what happened? After the helicopter started flying, be it engine failure or otherwise, or stopped flying, we don't know. We know it descended at a rapid rate. We don't know what condition the pilot was in, so we don't know if he tried to initiate the auto rotation process. We know that the aircraft hit the ground with some forward airspeed because they, you heard in their, the newspaper reporting that there was a debris field. So in other words, the aircraft hit and then parts of the aircraft were found in front of the crash site. So it probably hit with some forward airspeed, um, and it was the impact of, of it coming, striking the ground is probably what killed both of the passenger and the pilot. And we've learned nationally when Kobe Bryant's helicopter went down, we got a lot of, or a, a big indication of how they do these procedures. But you heard the parish president talk about the NTSB coming on board. How, how long does that normally take? Well, so back up a little. You heard the parish president say C.W. Cook, and that's yeah. a salvage operation. Okay. They were actually involved. We had the, um, hello, I mean, the airplane crash about a year and a half ago from the airplane that took off out of home. And C.W. Cook was the same outfit. They come in and just recover the wreckage. Mm -hmm. The wreckage is recovered, taken to a secure wa warehouse, and then the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, will assign an investigator who will put together a team of people to go and look at the wreckage, the remains of the engine, to try to find out what happened. So that's what, it, what from listening to, to uh, President Chasson, the wreckage has been recovered. It's probably being transported to the C.W. Cook Warehouse, I think over in the uh, Prairieville, Gonzales area, where then the NTSB will assign a national, you know, assign somebody who's trained to look at the wreckage and see, they'll, they can look at the engine components, they can look at the remains of the, the, the aircraft frame itself and start putting together what may have happened. You can look at the engine after the crash and tell if it had a failure, if it stopped working, et cetera. So that's, that'll be the next step in this process. The NTSB will probably put out a preliminary factual report within a couple of weeks, just telling the basics that the flight, where the flight was going to, where it was coming from and where it crashed the actual uh, factual report that'll tell more of the details and if it, that could be up to a year and a half to two years before that comes out. You heard the parish president talk about Mr. Dylan Horn, a U.S. Army veteran. When he was saying that, I was thinking of you. I mean, the, the characteristics are very similar and you've been in that position before many, many times as, as a pilot and, and I know because y'all served very similarly uh, in the military, you had to be thinking, uh, in losing one of your brothers here. It is, Martin. It's sad. You know, it's, um, I was fortunate enough to have never been in a crash during my 25 years in Army aviation, but um, a lot of people I know have been. And then most, a lot of your pilots offshore, and you back up, there's still a lot of the transportation functions of guys and gals coming from an offshore platform to shore are handled by helicopters. Some of them are transported by boats, but anyone that lives around here, you'll see on a daily basis the helicopters going back and forth. A lot of those pilots were trained in the military, the Army, the Coast Guard, the Navy, uh, or the Marine Corps. Um, so 
it's one of those things where I've been involved in, in cases before where a fellow military aviator may have done something or had a miscue. We don't know if that's what happens here, but you're right. It does. It kind of pulls at your heartstrings a little bit, knowing that uh, um, I have a similar background to where this gentleman came from. Yeah, with about a minute left, seems to me that, it, and this is just speculation, but if the eyewitness indeed heard a bang, and if indeed it, it comes down to that being factual, then it rules out pilot error, probably puts it in a mechanical realm. Well, it may rule out pilot error from the point of what caused the helicopter engine to stop running. It may not necessarily rule out pilot error as to whether he could have performed the procedure I said earlier of an mm -hmm. auto rotation, which is a procedure that once your engine fails, you can still uh, land a helicopter or have safely land the helicopter. So mm -hmm. that's what we don't know yet as to uh, whether the flight controls and the, the rotor was still functioning in a manner that he could have performed a successful auto rotation. And that'll all come in time, I'm sure. Chuck, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Appreciate it coming on, Martin. Thank you. All right, once again, Chuck Bork with St. Martin and Bork, very well versed uh, in these helicopter uh, crashes, like you heard. He's been a pilot for over 25 years, so we appreciate him coming on. We'll have a lot more. We'll keep you up to date as we get information on this very tragic accident that happened Friday last week. We'll be right back with more. Don't go away.